In this video, we will be covering the following topic. Different type of joints using alias and tips for using joints. Grid operation in MyScript. How do creation and authentication work in MyScript and MyScript user roles from Without further ado, let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. As you can see in MySQL or any other relational database, we have some joins. So what are joins? Joins help us to retrieve data from multiple tables in single query. So whenever you write a query, you probably have to add some relationship and when you write the query to get a result from one table, maybe it from multiple tables. So we can use joins in select, update and delete state. These are three command where you can put your joins. Okay. So what are the types of joins we have? We have inner joins, cross join, left join, right join, cell join. So we'll see in with example what are those. You can see the Venn diagram here. In cell join doesn't require any multiple table with the own table or one table. You can get the result. You probably have to write the statement to figure out how we you can do self join we have write join as well write joins means this will return all rows from right table and matched rows from the left table so it will just neglect few left part of your table which you can see in this diagram we have left join as well the opposite of that just opposite of right this returns rows from the left table and the matched rows from the right table and moreover, this full join and cross join are very similar to uh, see both each other. But thing is, if you have some relationship, let's say in full join, you uh, you may or may not have relationship or the ID will not be same. It can be anything. So everything, all the, uh, all the data, it's just like a multiplication of both table. You're getting the result. But in cross join, you will get only the common thing as well. Uh, and the part of the both table as well. The main difference between a full join and a cross join is that a full join will return all rows from the both table. Even there are node matching rows while cross join will only return rows that have matching value in both the table. Another difference is that a full join can be used to filter the result while a cross join cannot. This is because the full join returns all the rows from the both to the table so you can use where clause to filter the result. The cross join on the other hand cannot be filtered because it only returns rows that have matching values in the both the table. Hope you understood this difference. And the inner join which we also say intersection of the two table, the common part will be your result set. Okay. Let's see in the example. So let's say use this my skill first to go into your schema. Now let's create. So I am inside the MySQL. So we can use session also which we have created. To use that you must say the session schema. Run this. Now first we have to create some data over here which have some relationship. We had created a class, this class and this candidate which have, have some joins. Uh, we can understand uh, by going to this information this information i information check if there are foreign key or in primary key involved in the indexes you will see all those part here so we have one five primary key and also we have a foreign key as well if you don't know how to create i would suggest to visit the mysql advanced with sub queries primary key foreign key and alias link added in the description now we have another table which let's see what are these information go to index we have one primary key so you can see in the column list also we have id everything over here and also in the candidate you can see the data part where the id name age okay these are the uh, things we have so we are going to play with the candidate first i'm writing a statement which consists of join so select start form candidates a cd okay we have another class a c okay this both has to be joined just say join between the both and that's it if you run this query you will see all your result here this part this part age up to this one 
this is part of class. The first class we have ID name 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 columns we have. But with the candidate we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But when we are joining, we are getting how many? We are we are having more than that column. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is part of the candidate. And 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 columns as well. So the other part is here. We can notice that, right? So what is happening is it for each ID. So first is candidate. So whatever is the first that will teach us the beginning of the column. So, so if you see in the column, go to the candidate, we have two records. So first one into this one. So first line would be the first, this one and this one. So it says that one and then the first ID of other uh, class. Same belongs to the second. So if you iterate, we have second. So same, uh, so what is happening is for first record, it will hold one, two, three, four. There will be four more. So there will be four more, four and four into four, so four into two. There will be eight records here. One, two, let's count this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight records. So for each ID, one will be result of each of that. So it is multiplication of the both table. If you can see that this is what joins happening here. So let's understand the next which is left join. You just need to write left join over here to tell that what is your. So left join always works with you have to add the condition on how you are going to put the left join of both table. Okay. So for that you may write on or where also. So for with join you always recommend it is on. On means on what ID or what column you are having that join. So we have a common thing which is class ID and the ID. Both are having the common relationship between two. So how we are going to define it. So we have put alias for this candidate and alias for class. So we will add ID. Okay. Because I have to identify which class it is belong to. I can just say class ID. But if there is a same name over here, then there will be ambiguity in this. So better always to add a alias to identify the columns. Right. Equals to equals to that of that another class C dot ID. So I am what I'm going to do is I having uh, this table have relation between because this is a foreign key. This part, this one is a foreign key of this one. If you can see in this candidate also we have this class 14. 1, 14 is always present in this one, right? We can also add more, but for now let's see what we get in this result set. If I execute, yeah. So let's understand the this result what is happening over here and this example what what is happening when we have a class so let me execute this also to understand one so this up to this is part of candidate you can see right so always because this candidate this is the left part of that so left part will come appear here okay in this example we are we have only two record one and two what happened to other record because we have put a left join on this so only show only those which is id having one and uh, this one and four so one and four has come up here so amayank and this ati has up here you can see this in the example let's let's see uh, we have signs on both side right um, both having priyanka let's see understand okay correct so we have this id one and four which having figure that's why we are able to see so this is for left join whatever the table you have put so that will become the priority of this both table so we can do the same opposite we can put this class over here and this part over here let's see what happens now and keeping the same thing you can do vice versa also like c to id cd to class all works fine now we have four record how because this class having four record here 
So for each one, it will figure out the ID of that. So this ID should be present, this class ID. So we have this one. That's why this result first one has appeared. So what about the second one? Second, we have ID. But you can see this ID, this class is not because we have put equals to on this ID and class ID. So this four is not present. So we are searching for two, but two is not present here. So what will happen? It will put zero. So you can see this up to this one. This is part of the class table, all columns. And this is part of your candidate table. So this has put because it there is no result for this. So that's why I put null over here. So let's go to next. ID3 is not present in this. So same will have happen. Everything will be appeared here up to this. But you will get null for the other table. So what will happen for the fourth one? Fourth is present. Correct. We have found fourth. So this whole thing will be put across in this. So as you can see, two has been shared here. Hope you are able to understand so far. Let's begin for the next, which is right child. So whatever we have just discussed, this also can be done with right join. So if you can see this left join, what we did is actually equivalent to right join. Wait a second. Copy. I'm copying this thing and writing right join. So this both thing is actually equivalent. Let's see how equivalent. See, we have two record over here for this statement, left join, and two record also for the this right join. But both are how? Because what we have did is whatever was there in the left part, that will be the priority one. But in this case, right, we have just put this one in the beginning so that this become the priority. But with the right join, it means give the priority to the right portion, right table. So Again, the candidate become the priority one. So both statements are equal. But you can see that the column is quite different. How it is different? You can see this ID. This two part is part of this candidate. But same thing is not true for this one. Because this table has to be there in this. Right? So that's why this. So whatever you put that. That will come up here. here. So same goes for this one. Um, what I'm doing is I'm copying this thing and putting over here and writing right state. But the result will be the same. Only the column will be depends upon whatever you write in the beginning. So you can also always change the column. It's at your will. So if you want to change, if you want to show only those part, just instead of star, you put those part. Let's see that in an example. Now I want to show ID and name. To display ID and name for respective class and candidate, you have to use alias to identify the table. So we will add c.id and c.name for class, then cd.id and cd.name for candidate. Same goes for the right join. You will see the same result for both the query. So always remember when to use right and when to use left, and also remember the priority table where you are keeping your table which part of your okay hope you understood we have discussed full join so this is if you write just think this one it will become full join if you add this same condition on this will become the intersection or the inner join so if you what i am doing is i am doing inner join on this but i don't have any left join toy join you can see this right we have join simple join but I'm adding the condition. So you can see only those is shown which has the common thing. Yeah, this class ID and this class ID. Both are same. That's why only those record are falling to this result. There can be many ways to retrieve the same result. Let's discuss the other ways. The second way could be subquery way. I would recommend to check out this different type of subqueries from this video link. If you execute this query, you will get all the candidate records. Now this result of this query will become the subquery of this outer query part. Let me paste it inside the where clause like this. Here we will use ID to filter the inner query result. So if you execute, you will see the new query result, which should be the same of the inner join. 
uh, yeah, maybe this column will be interchange over here and there. Hope you understood so far. We have also a inner join concept for what is happening with the inner join. So if I just write inner join here over here and just run this one. Inner join is nothing but multiplication of the both table. You can see this statement and join statement are actually are same. If you just write inner join over here, it is not giving you intersection. How to write the inner join is you have to always define on clause to say that this is inner join. Whenever you write on even in the join statement or inner join, that will become the intersection. A best way to write both ways this one. So you will always have a confusion why there is a inner join here and join is there. Why don't just give join over here, right? You will get confused. So better always use inner join with on clause and say join simply. Okay. Hope I make you clear. Next topic we are going to talk about authorization and authentication in MySQL. These are two important concepts in database security and they are essential for ensuring that only authorized user can access your data. So what is authentication? Authentication is a process of verifying a user identity. This is usually done by requiring the user to provide a user and password. Once the user identity has been verified, they can be granted access to the system. Whereas authorization is a process of determining what a user is allowed to do once they have been authenticated. This is usually done by assigning the user different roles or permissions. For example, a user with the role of administrator might be allowed to create new user and databases, while a user with the role of viewer might only be allowed to view data. Let's understand how does MySQL implement authentication and authorization. MySQL uses a variety of authentication methods, including native password, SHA-256 password, auth sockets, etc. Whereas to authorization, MySQL uses roles and permissions. So when you open this MySQL workbench, you can see in the top, this will be the welcome whenever you install your MySQL. And you will see a root user because you in the beginning, you have created a user called root and password also root. For me, it is root now. So you can change the root as well. You can change the user as well. That becomes your administrator, admin user. So admin has the all rights or all privileges or all command he can do. He can do everything. So if, how to create new user? So in order to create new user, you can use command line or you can use this screen also. If you click this plus button, you will see some connection name. So what is this connection name? This admin, you can see this in the down. That is the connection. Here you can say that I have a connection called any name I'm picking from here. Let's say ready. Okay. So here host name, keep that because this is my server where this uh, my ping is running and this is the port. So user can be anything. I'm saying that this is person called um, site or oh, Sharat. I can write right Sharat over here. So user is going to be Sharat for now and password. So password, if we click you, you can write the password as well. So for now, I'm going to say root. Okay. So say okay and test connection. We asked what is your password? I'm saying root and saving. It says denied. Okay. So what it means that failed to connect with the user this person. I okay. I, what has happened is uh, it is already created and you cannot create multiple times. Whenever you say uh, okay, right? That created automatically. So you cannot create the same name one more time. That's what happening. So you can see this. This is how it is. You can also delete, delete this connection. I'm deleting this is the way what let me do one more time I'm saying guest for now okay guest this is and this is also guest username and guest for the password so if you say create it will be created but it will not open if you click that it will ask password which is not taking any more years so what we're going to do is we will go to this admin user we will create some users. So opening new is SQL. Check what are the users we have. So from there's a user table. If you run this one, you will see all your users. 
okay maybe i have to say mysql to get that user you can see this we have all the user we have root these are the host and this is the user right and these are the commands you can see select command insert command update delete these are the command this particular user, this root this is the root which we are doing here so it has all you can see yes 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 for all command right he can do everything other doesn't have all formations so what we can do is we have to create user new user so how to create user same like the table how we create we can say create user user name you have to say and i have to say identified by the password easier can be you should have username so i'm saying ready my user and at the rate the local host you can say or you can say you can say laptop as well also it is up to you so these are flexible so host will be treated in this under this one this kind of this is sub category of that but under that you have another value uh, user called root this will be listed in over here okay and then and defined by the password you have to say so here i'm going to say root for now if you hit this one you will see here this red deep user has been created let's see is, is it created or not so yeah you can see this root okay one mistake what i did is it has to be separate out like this because if you just put in double quote at the rate will all treat it as a user this will become a global i would say whatever we have created we can also delete the user user where i have this user equals to this num name okay not delete we have to say drop because these are structure difference we don't need to specify where clause this user is need to be dropped if i execute this is executed and if you see the data i don't have now okay now i will try to create a correct with the user and the host okay so you can see host is laptop and user is ready right okay right now we don't have him permission you can see this in this whole it doesn't have it all everything is no okay we have to give permission what this means that you have created a dummy user which doesn't have any permission or he cannot do any any sort of uh, tasks so in order to give some permission we have to grant permission so whatever we have for the root we are going to give it so whatever we have root this thing will copy to this one everything okay i'm writing statement or grant all all means the what is the permission or command you want to give on which table okay so what is table or schema this is my table so what are the table we have you can see in this left hand side we have this three schema practice session sys and the mysql as well okay these are the schema we have so you can say mysql you want to give it or you want to say session this session what we have created that all that schema of those star means all the table or you can give a particular table as well you can give only this access this table access as well so for now i'm going to give all the table access okay so that's why i'm say dot star all means all permissions whatever you have listed in this user table that will be become all to which user so this is my user what we will do is we will also give host you want to grant some permission so if you want to grant select like this select you want to let's say add permission for insert update okay create only these permission this command he can do let me add asterisk instead of specifying schema name these privileges are database name and it applies to all the tables of that database let's execute this query you can see this data has been changed yes 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 for everything right so only this created has been changed delete is still no and the other part is still no hope you understand this far what if if i revoke permission for mysql so let's see how we can do that open a new session to make you all understand this is one user this is another user so this admin this has all the admin right we need to open both open the both two two tabs 
this you need to give okay so this is admin so if i want to revoke for mysql user so take this mysql put it in revoke statements i want to just revoke select one okay let's see what happens to this one this is localhost and i want to run if you run this sql query you can see this it has become n okay now can we do select statement can we get query of select because we have just revoked can we do that let's see session of this schema and i want to see class you will be amazed that you're still able to see that why because you have already been in the session until unless this session is closed you will this user will still able to use this select statement i'm going to close this and reopen my mysql and now i am in new session of mysql if i write query you will see access is ding this command denied to user this part so this is the way to revoke some certain permission from that particular user oh by made you clear this time understand this why we do new session because whenever you create a session whatever the permission means all the permission of this where you can see grant these are the permission so in one session when you open it will collect all data what is there in the permission and it will tell that okay now you can do select permission because you have the permission granted and also for other commands so every statement or every transaction you execute it always check the permission even though this is a simple statement it will always check this is this select statement is have the permission or not so also this session schema has the permission or not or as also it will check the table has the permission for this user or not i hope you understand how all transaction works let's continue with the next topic roles for that let's hear a story a company using mysql for years the database was getting increasingly complex there were many different user with different needs and it was becoming difficult to manage all of the privileges one day a new developer joined the team he was excited to get started but he quickly realized that he didn't have the privilege he needed to do his job he had to ask the database administrator to grant him privileges for every database object he needs to access this was a time consuming and error prone the database administrator decided it was a time to implement roles roles are a way to group privilege together so that they can be granted to the user all at once this makes it easier to manage privileges then the database administrator created a few different roles each with specific set of privileges for example there was a role for developer a role for tester a role for administrator when a new developer joined the team he was granted the role of developer this gave him all the privileges he needed to his job without the database administrator having to grant him individual privileges for each database object the new developer was very much productive and he was able to get started to his work right away the database administrator was also happy because he didn't have to spend much time managing privileges so what did you learn roles is very important to create role how we can do that role is it's behave like the same way like user so create role i'm saying that right and this is part of development environment in corporate you will see these three set of environment it can be dev for development it can be uat for user acceptance testing before that also we have sit last we have prod or production before that also we we can have pre products as well so these are the jargons when you come across when we you working with organization so i want to create a role so that role will be become this way if you create role role is been created a role and a user both have differences how it is identified by a password but role is not identified it doesn't have any password you cannot log in with role so that is the difference between this role and user it will also list into your user table we have right here user and dev is host so same way we can we can also give permission so what i am going to do is i want to create some more roles over here and i will segregate one is for eat now i will grant permissions so i will say create or update whatever you want to do write or something right which involves 
some writing or modification of the table that will be given to this right person. More access like drop and changing the whole structure of database, I will not give those access. Only this where you can modify the database records. Okay, those privileges I want to give to this role. Okay, on and what? So I will give everything for now to this user. This is right. You can see this look like same. Only difference this is role. Execute, you can see read, write has few permission you can see yes 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 only this select doesn't have because he has got write permission he cannot read he can do modification that's what we wanted to give same applies to the read read will have only select so i just want to give permission to this select so now if i want to see you will see differences of this write and read we have yes, 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 yes. Now, we have created a role. Whenever there is a new user, if I want to give the new person, so I will not execute this statement one more time. So what I will do is, I will just give this new role to that user. Hope you understand how to grant roles to different users. There is a function which can change the active role for the current session. The function called current role. It is very simple to use. You can use it in a select statement to get the current active role for the current session. For example, say this query, it will return the current active role for the current session. If the user has no active role, then none will be returned. Let's, un let's understand when to use current role function. To determine the privilege that the current user has or some time to change the active role for the current session. Also, to check if the current user has the permission to perform a certain action or not. I hope you find this video informative and that you learned something new. And if you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. I am Atidinath and this has been Bit Science. I will see you in the next video.